Speed. Speeding. Speed. Uh, Speed. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Shiver take one. <laughs> Shiver. Was it right from the outset that you wanted to become a caster, or what was it? When I when I first started to play Dota 2, I just wanted to play Dota 2 and just don't do anything else at all. It, it, Dota wasn't really a specific like conscious choice for me. I used to play Warcraft 3 and Frozen Throne and play all the fun maps on Battle.net then and Dota was then one of the games that we often played and then I, I grew from well from Frozen Throne where World of Warcraft came out and started playing World of Warcraft full time for a very long time and then I got my Dota 2 beta key uh, which I only got in the mail like I only applied for that in October even after TI1 I didn't even know TI1 was going on when it was happening uh, but I, and I didn't really know anything about esports at the time either apart from maybe some arena games for World of Warcraft but uh, I just started playing Dota 2 and I just fell in love with it I, uh, I ended up going to the international too. I, I think I got, I got, I, I got, I got, I got. It got told to me like, hey, there's a chance that we can get you to the international too. And I'm like, sure, whatever. If you say so. I mean, I didn't really believe it at the start. And then I think two or three weeks in advance, I got told, yes, you're going. And I was going with Ghost of Gamers, and they sent me there as an interviewer, and never done any interviews in my entire career anywhere, at all. And that was, it was nerve-wracking. My first interview, I think many people will remember that because it was an interview with uh, 1437 and Sing Sing, uh, where 1437 gave the series good answers and Sing Sing gave answers uh, that basically only says to masturbate. Uh, that was my first experience <laughs> as an interviewer. So how are you spending your time in Seattle so far if you're not gaming? Masturbating. Sorry? Masturbating. Uh, but it was it was a really awesome experience. TI2 was really, really humbling, actually. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I think TI4 was the first TI where I thought, well, even if I don't get to work at this TI, I will still continue doing things in Dota 2 rather than having to go look for uh, for a normal job, quote-unquote. So I think that's the time when, when, when I made it, when I felt like, like, yes, I actually did it. I made this into a living. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Shiver. Here with Shiver. Uh, we're sitting here with Shiver. Here with Shiver. How are you doing today? I'm doing really great, thank you. I'm here with Shiver. Shiver, tell us what it's like being the most popular female caster in all of Dota 2. Are they playing with no fear? And those three kind of uh, shining examples for that kind of play. To be honest, everybody is playing without fear apart from PG. I, I had to say it. I'm sorry. That was it's a good one. I liked it. From uh, from TI4, I, I, was, I was only casting up until TI4. Uh, didn't do anything else but cast, basically. Uh, and then when TA4 came around, I got asked like, hey, do you want to do some uh, some, some group stage panelists? And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll be on the panel for for group stages because I mean, yeah, that was my first invite to TI. I'm not gonna say no to Ice Rock, are you kidding? Uh, so I went to TI, uh, uh, TA, TA4, sat in the panel, uh, first day, James like, hey, you, you wanna open the show? Sure, never hosted anything. <laughs> But you know, I, I don't know why I said yes, but I did it anyways, and it was it was it was a lot of fun. I could have done could have gone better. If I think back, it's like oh, I would have done things differently. But that was uh, that was insane. And then obviously making it to TI five as well, and being a <clears throat> being a host for the Dream League as well over the last two seasons, three seasons actually, has been amazing. And it's just it's yeah, it's kind of weird to think that that's my life now.